I'd like to have Roy Keane on the team uh, for his determination. Brunette. For some reason, I don't put on my helmet till the start of a match. Boxers. Breakfast. Uh, I eat read a bit. The killers. <laughs> I don't know how to answer that one actually. Sorry. <laughs> Losing the All Ireland last year uh, to Cork. I don't think Aston was the first car I bought. Uh, Michael Ling did me a good deal in Kilkenny. Burial, cremination sounds a bit, uh, a bit tough. Maradona because he beat England in '86 on his own. Pitch. Uh, yeah, it wasn't bad for them. I like to swim and uh, read a little bit for relaxation. Uh, John Hine is probably the biggest joker on the team. Uh, his nickname is Dougal, so that, uh, that explains it. DJ Carey, of course. Right. Uh, now, I want to talk to you a little bit about today's games. Um, in particular, sharp uh, observers of our cardboard cutouts each week will have realised that we had Eugene Clunan as our goal man, but he's not in Croke Park today, and you're a club mate of his. Is there much upset and unrest in Galway about the fact that he's not in the, in the panel even? Well, I suppose there's a bit of upset in Galway, of course, because, um, you know, Eugene Clunan is, is um, one of the, the top forwards in, in, the, in the county for sure, and if not the country, you know? like. Uh, he can take penalties. He takes frees. He, you know, he, he's one of the, well, he's one of the best forwards around. You know, so like I can tell you one thing that uh, hey, we're playing club hurling at the moment, and he's one forward that I would have. I'd want b b before any other forward on my team. Anyway, he should so. he should be in the starting fifteen. Would be your argument here? Well, uh, you know, it, it's my opinion, and, and I, I, I might be a bit biased because I'd be from from Athenry and everything. But uh, like uh, the fact that Eugene Clonan is not up here playing Kilkenny in All Ireland um, semi final, it, it, it's. In my view, it's crazy, you know. And even talked to Adrian, they was asking me where, where is DJ or where is um, uh, Eugene, and not alone Eugene, but Jeremy, his brother. Yeah. Uh, last year in the in the All Ireland uh, qualifiers with with Kilkenny, uh, Jeremy was the only one that stood out in, in the whole game, you know. So yeah. um, like the two of them, uh, you know, I'd be there, I'd be hearing different stories, like. But okay. you know, it's very hard to comment on it, really. Yeah, I'll ask you about what impact it's going to have on the actual game itself today. But it's time for you to prove that uh, you're the best man on the couch. So <laughs> another drum roll, please. <laughs> So you're you? very welcome to the Park Thank Life Skills much. Challenge. I hope you've been in training now the last couple of weeks for this. Yeah. Yes? Stephanie Adrian wrote here a while ago now, so we just see. Ah, uh, that's good. First well, time I hit the red, so. <laughs> oh well, hopefully you'll be able to repeat that now. Let's see what you're up against. Starting off at the bottom is Mark Landers. Working yeah. our way up, we have our Galway trio. Now you're the fourth Galway man to take part in the Skills Challenge, but you're the yeah. first to go solo. They got 15. Here we have 21, 24, which yeah, Adrian yeah. got today, on up to 34. James O'Connor so is still up there. Is anyone going to knock him off that top spot? Well, we'll see. I'm not so bad. Pete Finnerty, anyway, there. I see from Goa, it was always good to take a pint. <laughs> well, let's see how we go. Now, there's not much room for high fielding in here. Hope right, don't cramp yeah. your style. But you've got 45 seconds on the clock. Okay. You know the rules. I'm going to get well out of your way here now because you look like you're a man on the mission. <laughs> so, hey, Joe, for the pride of Athenry, uh, yeah. okay. go for it. Yeah. Keep it a bit lower. That's another blue, that's a nice and safe one. Okay, 25 seconds left though. Okay, you're on 10 points, 20 seconds left. And you've got 15 seconds left. Come on, you're on 12. Get another one of those reds, Joe. Come on, you did it earlier. Three, two, one. 
OK, well, the story isn't too bad. You're not at the bottom. Yeah, Any yeah. broken bones? How are you doing? No, no, are you I'm OK? Fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. OK, well, we had the paramedics on standby, <laughs> so it's OK. It's all clear. Ambulance can go away. Now, Joe, you have gotten, you've gotten 14 points. So Mark Landers, if you're watching, I'm sure you're delighted. Yeah, yeah. You're down there with him. Oh. Now, and I had a tenor on with Joe, or with, with Ger today, that you were going to win. What am I going to do? Well, I'll take, give him the tenor on for it. Go on in and sit down and take a break. Well done, okay. Joe. Thank you. Oh, my God. We were just saying that you were much better uh, in rehearsal. <laughs> what happened? Oh, I hit the upright a couple of times. You got put the pressure on him. <laughs> he, he got 24 there. I was expecting him to get nothing. <laughs> a couple of points hit last night. All right, I, I've got to ask you about today's game. There's been a certain nervousness about, well, maybe not nervousness, but difference in how Kilkenny have prepared for this game. Keeping the fans out from Nolan Park, bringing the players up to, uh, to Dublin. Is it just more professionalism or is it nervousness? No, I think Kilkenny, to be fair, haven't been firing all cylinders in the last two or three games. This Kilkenny team, oh, supporters, nothing. We've, we're going nine, nine semi-finals in a row, going for seven all earns appearances in a row. Like, I mean, just a tremendous team. They owe nothing to nobody. Brian Cody, obviously, and the management team decided that they needed a little bit of time to themselves and more focus. And in fairness, I've been in at one or two of the training sessions in recent times, and while the supporters are excellent, Kilkenny supporters are excellent, it has been a little bit like a circus in there as regards every score has been clapped. And, you know, yeah. it's a little bit off. So they're being more focused, hopefully, I'd say. OK, all right, the lads are staying with us, and we'll get their final predictions uh, before the programme is out. But Mairead is uh, standing by in the museum with some more cool old stuff. Well, John was in touch from Limerick to say that Kilkenny are a team on the slide. If Galway take an early lead, they can take advantage. Also, Paul and Nathan Rye reckons that Galway have to show a bit of conviction today. If they do, then they have the players to go all the way. Well, some people giving Galway a bit of a chance today, but Kilkenny still are hot favourites. Just a couple of hours' time, we'll see. Now, it's not an easy job to predict the outcome of next Saturday's replay between Dublin and Tyrone. But if Dublin do win, They'll go on to meet Armagh in the semi-finals and things will be very different to when those two teams met back in the 1976 final. And now we're not just talking dressing room access and fashion sense here. Back in those days, Ulster teams didn't quite have the same swagger when they came to Crow Park. And here it is, the Sam Maguire Cup is back in Dublin for a second year. Tony Hanahaw, the captain, was an anti-climax, Tony. No, indeed, it was not, Mick. I... I wasn't satisfied or I didn't relax until the last whistle went. I'd like to say to our man, you know, hard luck. It must be hard coming up the first time and being beaten by so much. But they should take encouragement. They've shown great guts throughout the campaign and I'm sure they'll be back again in the near future. I think they shouldn't be disheartened. We lost after winning one and you had to come back, back again. But Dublin were the exceptions to that rule. Well, we like to think we're the exceptions to all rules. <laughs> The excitement was fantastic, even in the training sessions on the week prior to the All Ireland final. It was most enjoyable and uh, something to be remembered forever. This, I suppose, could really be the David and Goliath of modern football. I faintly remember the canal end, where it was just a sea of saffron when we came out, but again, we could get comfort by looking up the far end and looking at the hill. We got a uh, free kick and uh, I kicked it straight out the centre of the field. Bad kick, unfortunately, and uh, it went straight to Brian Mullins. The game had only started. Brian got the ball and he kicked it into the corner towards the hill 16 for myself. I was in there with Tom McCreesh. Now, Tom was in front of me and Tom gathered the ball, but I'd say because it was a greasy ball, he dropped it. I slipped and let it fall and it's history since then. So I picked the ball up and I looked over at the goal and I, I was at a very acute angle, so I decided to go for a point. But luckily for me, uh, Brian McLinden had come off his line. Uh, I underkicked the ball, went over Brian's head into the corner of the net and it was a goal. Oh, what a goal! What a goal by Jimmy Teasley! I never discussed it with Jimmy, while Jimmy is a very good friend of mine and I know him extremely well and know him going back to the early 60s. You know what I mean? It wasn't a, a sort of a daunting task to me to...